It's time now for an in-depth look at the global markets this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Huang Zeun, Research Fellow at the Korea Capital Market Institute. Dr. Huang, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for inviting me today. Well, last Friday, Wall Street ended sharply higher as concerns over interest rates seemed to ease. Uh, here in Korea, stocks were up on this Monday. What's the story today? In Wall Street, the stocks ended higher Friday as a rebound in bond yields eased fears of recession that sent the stocks tumbling earlier in the week. Major stock averages are set to post their third straight weekly losses, with the S&P 500 down about 1% so far. August has been a volatile and brutal month for the stock market, as the Dow has lost nearly 4%. The yield curve inversions, along with U.S.-China trade war, are big drivers of market movement. However, stocks in the U.S. gained as Treasury yields continued to recover from multi-year lows reached last week. Stocks in Asia gained as traders kicked off a busy week for economic data and awaited commentary from the Federal Reserve Chief. Shares in Hong Kong and China-led gains helped in part by Beijing's plan to reform its interest rate system and lower borrowing costs. Equities were also higher in Tokyo and Seoul. South Korea's Kospi gained 0.66%, while Japan's Nikkei rose 0.71% today. Yeah, now, as you referenced last week, we saw the rate on the U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury fall below that of the two-year, adding to fears of a global recession. Why did that happen, and uh, what do you see happening on that front this week? Bond yields climbed back from their historic lows last week. The U.S. 30-year Treasury yield dropped to a record low Thursday, while the yield on benchmark 10-year notes dipped to a three-year low as investors sought out safe haven assets. The 10-year Treasury yields fell below the two-year rate for the first time since 2007. Inversion didn't last, but the bond market is making its feelings about the outlook pretty clear. Normally, yield curves slope upward. So far, so for the curve to invert implies that investors are forecasting that something unusual will happen, something that will push future interest rates down low enough to justify long-term yields being low despite the risk. A future recession can be a very good reason. Actually, if we look at the historical track record, Every time the two-year to 10-year inversion has happened, a recession has followed. While the empirical link between past inversion events and recessions is real, it is not quite clear how severe the recession would be. It is getting more obvious that the recession is coming. However, the timing and magnitude are still quite uncertain this time. Yeah, very interesting. Well, now, this Friday, Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell will be giving a speech in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, the IMF is sending evaluators to Korea this week as well. Uh, tell us more about that and other events uh, scheduled this week. My news of the Fed's July meeting will provide details on the discussions leading to the first interest rate cut in a decade when they are released on Wednesday. In addition to this, Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank hosts its annual central banking symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, starting Thursday. Fed Chair Jerome Powell will give remarks on Friday. With market volatility soaring in August, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's address at the Jackson Hole gathering on Friday will be key to gauging whether U.S. policymakers will add to July's rate cut. South Korean exports on Wednesday will offer an early read on the latest on global trade. The figures for August follow sharp year-on-year -year declines in both June and July. Global trade worries are also having an effect in Japan, where the yen's 
have haven appeal is pushing the currency higher. The European Central Bank jumps into the spotlight on Thursday when the record of its last meeting is released. The gathering saw no policy change, but Mario Draghi said in train a countdown for September when a rate cut is expected. Quantitative easing is also on, an, on the table, though, just as an option for now. All right, Dr. Huang, thank you for coming on today as we start the week. That's where we'll have to leave it today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.